there, it's Craig Turner Bullock from Unleashed Education here and welcome to another editing toolbox video. In these videos, Charlotte and I take turns each in sharing a quick tip, trick or technique that we hope will help you with your pet photography editing. And today I'm going to be uh, showing you something in Adobe Photoshop. So this is something that I feel quite passionately about. I may go on a rant, forgive me in advance. This is something I see people doing a lot in pet photography and it's really not the way to do things. So uh, with that being said, this is my uh, example image today of gorgeous Millie here, taken with Charlotte actually, after um, we taught in Tasmania at the Star Lab workshop in 2020 before everything went crazy in the world. So obviously, as you can see, Millie is a beautiful little black and white border collie. And with black and white dogs, what you will often find, or with any dogs really, I guess, is, is that their fur can take on a variety of different color casts. In this case, there is a lot of kind of orangey redness in Millie's chest. There's a little bit of red going on in some of the blacks there as well. There's some blues in her face and there's even little bits of red on the edges of her fur. How do we deal with that? Well, let me start by telling you how you do not deal with that. And this is what I see all the time. Please don't do this. I see this in a lot of edits. It is simply just a way of dealing with color casts really easily. It is by actually just removing the saturation, desaturating the specific colors in the cast or just desaturating as a whole on the actual dog, except for the eyes. I made this edit and basically what I did was I went to uh, the hue and saturation panel, which is command or control and new as your shortcut. But I desaturated the reds and I desaturated the yellows and then I just brightened them up a little bit. And this is what I see a lot. And dealing with color casts, yeah, I'm ranting, aren't I? I really am, I'm sorry, but this is something we cannot do to get rid of color casts. Okay, let me go back to my example again. So what you're seeing here in the color cast is not only the fact that there is a little bit of redness in the black fur on Millie, but there is light bouncing from the surroundings onto her as well. That is perfectly normal. It is very normal for a dog in an area with lots of red in it to have red casting in the fur, very much in the same way as if a dog is standing on a grassy area, it might pick up lots of greens in its chest and underneath. Now, the object here in correcting and editing this in a much better way is to minimize the color cast, but we don't want to eliminate it fully. So I'll show you my fully finished image here. Now you can see in the whites, the whites are much brighter, but there is still some kind of yellow and red toning in there. The colors on her back do still have a little bit of red presence, but we have minimized the effect of those color casts so that the blacks and the whites look more clean and more, more realistic. So what I'll do now is I'll actually show you how I got to that point. So what I want to do on this first is make a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to my adjustment layer, going to curves, and I actually just want to brighten up that chest. Now, what you will often find with color casts is they are lesser with the increase in exposure. So I've increased the exposure here the color cast looks less severe than it did when, when the image was darker. So let's turn this off. It looks very red and very muddy there. Lightening it up a bit has already minimized it quite a bit. Obviously, we only want that to apply to the chest area. So I'll invert this layer mask by pressing Command and I, and then I'll get my brush tool. B is your shortcut for brush. Now I'm on a black layer, so I want to use a white brush and then I just want to paint on to Millie's chest area here. I'll do her front legs. I might even just do all of the white parts of her fur actually. And you could actually do a select subject on this or, or something similar just to make a slightly better selection there if you, if you wanted to. Okay, I'm happy with that and we're already making great improvements to these color casts. 
I'm actually just going to merge this layer down and duplicate it again. So now I want to make a color balance adjustment. Command or Control and B is your shortcut for that. There is not really much that we cannot do with this color balance. If you look at the colors present in the fur, there will be a corresponding slider here to the color cast. And so all we need to do to correct it is push it in the opposite direction. So for example, taking out yellow, I'm adding in blues. Taking out red, I'm adding in cyan. Taking out green or taking away magenta, I'm doing the opposite on that slider there. If we go now to preview and turn that off, again, you can see how I'm reducing the color cast by going in those opposite directions on those sliders there. So let's go OK on this. And again, I want to mask this and just apply it to the areas that I want. I don't want to be changing the whole image. I don't want to be adding blues into the blacks. There's already blues present in the blacks. I'll deal with that all separately. We're going to go Command and I again to invert that mask. And let's use the brush once more just to paint that all back in. That'll do. Let's flatten that. Command and J again. And then I want to just deal with the color cast in the blacks. So like I said, it's quite blue. So if I go Command and B, blues, I'm going to add in yellow. Now, if we add heaps of yellow and exaggerate this, we can see where, where the worst colors were. And if you add red in as well, you can see if there's any cyan in there. I think there is probably a bit of cyan in there. So I think adding a little bit of red, even though we have got some reds down here already, is going to help there a little bit more. And you just see, just by correcting that color cast, you just bring those blacks to life without them looking kind of grayed and dead looking and, and without any color at all. So we just repeat this process, invert this mask, brush again, just on the areas I want it. I don't really want to bring it onto the top of the head here because there's already some red present there. Uh, I, I don't want to bring it too much into the reds already on the dog there as well. And I think that's probably okay. Again, I'm going to merge that duplicate it. I generally work with flattened layers. You might want to keep each layer as you go and just build upon this so you can go back and, and change them later. I generally don't unless I need a specific mask or something or might want to go back to something to change it later. Next thing is the rest of the, the reds here. So I will show you a slightly different technique for this. If I now go command or control and U, that brings up your hue and saturation panel. Now I'm not completely opposed to pulling a little bit of saturation out of the colors, but this needs to be used sparingly and never, ever, ever going down to zero. I am actually gonna go to the reds and I am going to take the saturation down a little bit here. And usually I'm around about 20. I very rarely go more than that. I might just do a tiny little bit to the image overall as well just a tiny, tiny little bit, just to get the worst of that color remaining out. And that's it, that's all it needs. So once again, Command and I, grab your brush, mask it over the areas that you want it to apply to. I will take it a bit onto the chest here to just take some of the edge out of that still as well. And we want to come up on top of the head there as well, just to get rid of the casts all around there. And that is pretty much how to fix the colors. Let's go back to the beginning. So that's where we started. And that's where we ended up. So we have the blacks blacker, the whites are whiter. There is still some color present in those two colors. And that is the way it should be. But we have minimized how severe those casts are, which is the best way to handle that. Please do not end up with images that look like this where everything is just gray on the dog and the world of the dog and its eyes are in bright, glorious colors because that is a 1990s selective coloring dated disaster. But as I said, just to repeat myself one more time and end my rant, um, there is nothing that you cannot correct to a large degree using color balance 
and using exposure to correct these color casts. So hopefully that has been a helpful editing toolbox for you this week. Please go forth and give your dogs some color, even in the blacks and the whites. And I'll see you again for another editing toolbox very soon.